When Road Rash first showed up on the Sega Genesis in 1991, it wasn't the first vehicle combat game I had ever played, but it had a unique attitude about it that made it appealing. The series proved so popular that it set off over a decade of games in the Road Rash universe across three generations of hardware. Whether it was a system from Sega, Sony, Nintendo, or even the 3DO, there was a Road Rash just for you. In this episode, we will be looking at games that would appear under the Road Rash banner, talk a little bit about their impact and quality, and I'll show you a modern game you can get that's inspired by it. I hope you guys enjoy the Road Rash series. The very first Road Rash was developed internally and released in late 1991 by Electronic Arts for the Sega Genesis. Its strange soundtrack was something the more you listened to, the more you came to enjoy it. It was done by Rob Hubbard, who also did the excellent music for the original John Madden Football, Budokan, Desert Strike, and The Immortal. The structure here would define the entire series. You start out with basically nothing, trying to win races and money to upgrade your bike. Races would get longer and reward more money until you had the most expensive bike and could challenge the final level. The visuals here are a bit choppy by today's standards, but back then they blew me away. I love the multi-layer clouds and backdrops inspired by the California skyline. The road has an almost hypnotic flow to it that once you get the feel for it, really becomes something all its own. You can of course punch and kick other riders to protect yourself, or just to be an ass, and there are obstacles like cars and animals that litter the road. There is also a two-player mode here, but it's one at a time. It was a solid start for the series, though typing in the password to keep your progress totally sucked. An impressive port of it was done on the Sega Master System and Game Gear by Probe Software a few years later that kept almost all the content and played pretty darn well. It sacrificed only some speed, but was otherwise visually faithful. There's even a freaking port of it to the Game Boy if you can believe it. Quick to capitalize on the success of the first, EA was back in late 1992 with Road Rash 2. You get five new maps that are now spread across the entire United States, two-player split screen, a bunch of new bikes to purchase, and a load of new animations for you and your competitors. Outside of that, the setup is very much the same. Race, gain money, buy better rides, and beat the heck out of your competition. The visuals here are just as good as the first, but now with better color and more variety in the stages. The music again has its own thing happening, but I prefer the original game's more unique sound. Many consider this the best one in the series, and it's hard to argue with that. The different tracks, the multiplayer, it all comes together in a way that really stood out at the time. It also added a ton of personality to a game that was already overflowing with it, Thanks to new characters and touches like animated screens after the races, it's a must-own if you collect for Sega 16-bit hardware. In the summer of 1994, game maker Monkey Doo Productions burst onto the scene with Road Rash for the 3DO Interactive Multiplayer. This version did away with the simple 2D scaling effects of the Genesis games and went with textured mapped polygon tracks. The riders, cars, and pedestrians are all 2D digitized sprites, but the impact of the engine was still utterly impressive in every single way. What looked good before now sparkled with a 3D feel that only a next generation machine could bring. It kept the same basic setup as the original Genesis game. You race at different locations all over the California countryside in an effort to win money and advance your level. It loses the two player mode found in part two, but thankfully has a save system that did away with the awful passwords of the first two games. 
the colorful personalities are back and crazier than ever thanks to an exaggerated art style that borders on the surreal. It also was one of the first instances of a fully featured licensed soundtrack from bands like Soundgarden. This is one of my favorite video games of all time. The visuals, the music, the sound of the bike engines, the art style, and just about everything else resonated with me immediately. It was so popular and made such an impression that it was ported to the Sony PlayStation, Sega Saturn, and PC a few years later. These versions improved a few things over the 3D original, such as the performance, but I still prefer the sound and image quality of the first release. Honestly, you can't go wrong with any of them. In early 1995, Monkey Doo Productions released Road Rash 3 Tour de Force for the Sega Genesis. Since the 3DO version had made use of digitized sprites, this new entry uses the same. Unlike the 3DO version, however, the Genesis simply can't display the colors needed for these digitized images to look good, and the resulting visual presentation takes a nosedive from the first two games. I detest how some of the elements of this game look. The riders look just awful, and the backgrounds are so dithered and washed out, they look like something that should be running on old PC 16 color hardware. Thing is, though, this is still a great Road Rash game. You're no longer trapped on the North American continent here, and have access to places like the UK, Germany, Brazil, and even Kenya. The variety in tracks is also met with a larger variety in music, which often tries to resemble something you'd hear from that region. You also get nice touches like regional wildlife popping up here and there, and cars driving on the opposite side of the road from what you're used to. There are also new weapons to use, and cops will run you down with cars and helicopters. Two-player split-screen returns as well. Like I said, as much as I hate how this game looks compared to the other 16-bit versions, it's no less a great game. Right around the same time that Road Rash 3 was released on the Genesis, Road Rash showed up on the Sega CD. Monkey Doo Productions tried something here that I was really excited for. They wanted to port the 3DO version to a 16-bit system. While I had visions of this in the Road Rash universe, what I got was nothing of the kind. Instead of building an impressive new engine that takes advantage of the Sega CD scaling abilities, they simply moved over the Genesis assets of Road Rash 3 and covered it with the presentation from Road Rash 32-bit. The digitized sprites once again failed to translate well to the Sega platform, and again everything looks dithered and washed out something terrible. Worse, the high color art from the 3DO version is massacred here and looks just as bad as anything I've seen on the system. These images should have been redrawn to the 64 color spec of the Genesis instead of just dithered all to hell. In the plus column, the great licensed music is still here and playable during the races, and the familiar full motion video returns intact and still decent looking. I actually think this game was a good idea in theory, but without building a custom engine for it, what we are left with is an awful looking mess that is a shell of the experience on which it's based. Perhaps the greatest sin is the fact that it doesn't run as well as the Genesis games either. I mean, when you get to level 5 and are flat out the fastest your top-end bike can go, it's a mess of stuttering images and gameplay. It even loses the two-player mode in the process. I love the Road Rash series, and if you do as well, you'll find enough here to squeeze some fun out of it. But no amount of fanboy enthusiasm can hide the fact that this was a substandard use of the license. This should have been so very much better.
It would be years before we'd see a new entry, and that came in mid-1998 with Road Rash 3D. Now featuring a fully polygonal engine, Road Rash was ready to tackle a brand new frontier by introducing games and a common map that had you racing on interconnected roads. The setup takes the familiar route in the original 3DO version from there. You can choose from the campaign-based big game mode or the arcade-like thrash mode. From there, you have your choices of races to compete in to gain money, buy new bikes, and open up new options. The full motion video cinemas are back, as is more rock music, though none of it sounds as good as what came before it. The visuals here were typical PlayStation. Low polygon characters and vehicles set to decent looking trackside details. The performance isn't bad and the draw distance is actually really impressive. The biggest problem this game has is its gameplay. Your bike has an unnatural grip when making sharp turns that can send newbies all over the track like a ping pong ball. This mechanic takes some getting used to and can infuriate easily in just a few minutes. Using your brake often can help you early on until you become better acclimated, but nothing is going to help its awful combat. It just doesn't feel right and it's a huge step back from the previous games. Nothing connects with any real force and the animations are all janky and slow. You can still have some serious fun with this one if you can stick to just racing and can get yourself used to the way the bikes grip. But with a busted combat system and only single player support, the replay value falls well short of previous games. At the end of summer in 1999, EA licensed out the Road Rash property to THQ, who then had a small developer called Pacific Coast Power and Light develop Road Rash 64 for the, you guessed it, Nintendo 64. And boy oh boy does this look like a Nintendo 64 game. Blurry, undetailed landscapes dominate the entire presentation, and of course lots of fog latent draw-in for your amusement. A quick look at this and most of you are probably thinking that's something I can skip. Not so fast because while it certainly ain't the prettiest of the series, it does have a few things going for it. First, the performance is actually quite good. Everything runs smoothly and it's noticeably less bouncy and warpy than Road Rash 3D. It also plays better overall, with no weird gripping to throw you off your game. The combat is still a bit funky but it too is better and more palatable here. This isn't going to dethrone the 3DO original, but it is worth firing up and trying a few times to see what it offers you. The music and visuals are by far its weakest assets, but between the solid gameplay and multiplayer modes, I was able to find enough here to warrant my time. The final game in the Road Rash series came in early 2000 with Road Rash Jailbreak. It was developed by EA Redwood Shores, the same guys that would do the Dead Space series some years later. Like Road Rash 3D, this again takes many cues from the Need for Speed games by introducing gangs, a central antagonist, as well as a map that has roads that all connect. But where Road Rash 3D had tons of problems with its initial gameplay, this plays much better from the moment you pick up the controller. The graphics engine is extremely similar, and side by side you'd be hard pressed to tell them apart. But that difference ends when it comes to gameplay and options. This is so much more accessible thanks to the better gameplay and multiplayer modes. It still of course has the wild full motion video cinemas and rock music behind it all, but I enjoyed this a lot more. The polygon models are still low and the fighting is still not nearly as good as it should have been, but there is more than enough here to hold your attention. 
While not the same game in the slightest, the IP itself was used in 2003 for the GBA adaptation of the same game. I really like this one too, and honestly, this is what I was expecting from the Sega CD version. While this of course is far smoother than it likely would have been on the Sega CD, the basic elements of the engine are exactly what I expected. As it stands, this Game Boy Advance version is quite playable, has a great engine behind it, and only lacks the decent soundtrack that usually accompanies the series. If you're looking for something on the go, this is a winner that looks and plays great. I'd also like to take a moment to show you Road Redemption. This takes inspiration from the Road Rash series in a number of ways, adding guns and other projectile-based attacks. It's available for all the major platforms, and other than its brutal difficulty, I enjoyed it. It's got multiplayer as well. Road Rash is definitely directly connected with some of the best memories I have of the Sega Genesis. It was a unique product at the time that had its own look, sound, and feel. I had always wanted to see what the Super Nintendo could have done with it given its Mode 7 abilities, but alas, while it was in development, a final release never materialized. I also had always hoped EA would come around and support the Dreamcast, and I certainly would have enjoyed a better looking and running version of Jailbreak on it. While the quality of the Road Rash games were generally excellent in its early years, there's no question that the later ones were something of an acquired taste. Perhaps this could be directly attributed to the growth of EA itself, going from a relatively small developer to a rather massive one in a decade or so in between the beginning and end of the series. It's funny to consider that Road Rash wasn't nearly as popular or successful as it seemed given my overall love for the many games that bear its title but EA gave up on it for a reason, and most likely it had to do with the sales and money-making potential of it. With the GBA version of Jailbreak came the end of the Road Rash series. There hasn't been another game of any kind now for 17 years despite you hearing a developer showing interest from time to time. That's a real shame because the mere thought of online clubs and games, bike and rider customizations, 32-player online races, weapon crafting and real world highways and roads make me believe that this game series would still be quite viable in today's market. Maybe someday we'll get someone at EA who will agree. I'm Sega Lord X. thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.